nuclear power on the moon. Jason, what do you think about this? I feel like it's not even accepted on Earth. Oh, yeah. Actually, in some places, yeah, it's not not very accepted. So the thing is that NASA is wrapping up its first phase of an ambitious reactor project. The project aims to get a reactor up and running on the moon in the early 2030s. So that's not even far. That's like 10 years. Yeah, but I mean... I forget when they're supposed to go to the moon. Like, I feel like they keep delaying this stuff. I do feel like they keep on delaying some of this stuff, too. Um, so the thing is, <laughs> they do keep on delaying, like, going back uh-huh. to the moon. So the thing is, this project aims to develop safe, clean, reliable energy um, to the moon. In Because the thing is, nighttime on the moon in certain areas lasts around 14.5 Earth days. Mm. That's a long time. So you're going to need some sort of energy power there. Mm. But the thing is, like, nuclear power, it is, like like I mentioned before, there's some places that don't necessarily look very fondly on using nuclear power. But I mm. think that um, how they're going about it should be pretty good. The thing is that the system could play a big role in the agency's Artemis program for lunar exploration. Mm. The thing is, NASA and the U.S. Department of, Department of Energy announced contracts to three companies, Lockheed Martin, Westinghouse, and IX, a joint venture of intuitive machines and X Energy for this initial phase back in 2022. The three companies were tasked with submitting an initial design for a reactor and sub subsystem estimated cost and development schedule that could pave a way forward for this. Mm. So I think those are some really big companies there too. And I do have a couple more things to say about this. But before that, if you like interesting content like this, consider subscribing. We put out interesting videos daily. We have a library of over 300 videos. And you know what? Subscribing's free. It doesn't cost anything. And it does really help out the channel. So if you like content like this, consider subscribing. So the thing is, a reactor could be especially useful at the lunar south pole, where permanently shadowed regions are thought to have trapped water and ice and other um, other things there. But this is mainly about having energy. Mm-hmm. I think this is extremely useful, especially on the moon. Uh, yeah, yeah. I feel like you could do, if it's like 14 days of, of darkness or whatever. That's such a long time. Yeah, but then, like, wouldn't it be the opposite, too? Or, like, 14 days of the sun? sun? Yeah. You could have those batteries up there. Yeah, but there's so much good benefits to having the sun rather than being in the dark. Yeah, but then well, when I, when I say that, I mean, like, you could have solar energy oh, yeah. for 14 days, and then you store all the energy in batteries, and then yeah. have the batteries there. It is interesting. Yeah, it is interesting that they're going the, the nuclear route instead of the solar. But, yeah, I guess if in this case, like, where there's like certain areas with no sun it makes sense Mm -hmm. because like like you mentioned it's like uh there is on the south pole like almost complete darkness (laughs) so the thing is that nasa's next plan is to extend the phase one contracts to refine the project's direction to phase two which involves a final reactor design for the lunar uh demonstration um yeah and expects to open it in 2025 so these days are coming up really fast yeah yeah i think that like you mentioned i think space exploration is going to be coming up fast and over the next few years i think yes even the travel to the moon that's going to be happening is going to be coming up faster and the thing is that i think eventually colonies on the moon i think that's what this all leads to Mm. your doubts rather than on mars i think like the whole idea is that the moon becomes a fueling station like i think the whole idea is that they're going to take make fuel somehow on the moon Mm -hmm. and then use it as like a spaceport to get to mars oh oh that makes sense yeah i could see that happening because i think that it's a good distance away Mm -hmm. um for refueling and being able to do um anything you need to Mm -hmm. um as like somewhat of like a little past the starting point yeah so for those of you don't know i think the idea is that you mentioned earlier that there's a lot of water potentially water and other things like 
on the South Pole. Yeah. But they need to get it. So they need some sort of power source, nuclear power. So the idea, I think, is going to be that they go into the South Pole with these nuclear reactors to then make hydrogen fuel oh. for the, the spacecraft to then travel further. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't think yeah, about that. Yeah, from the water. There's, you know, because you need a lot. Of, so the thing with the hydrogen energy is that it takes a lot of energy to make hydrogen. Oh, yes. So they need more energy than like you would normally be able to get. So so they need it to make the fuel probably. But the thing is, by the way, this is the very last bit of it that um, it's interesting that you mentioned the hydrogen part, mm -hmm. especially uh, for energy. The thing is, and refueling, because the thing is, here's where I'm going to, it's going to take a little bit of a turn. SpaceX? Yes. No, no, not SpaceX. After phase two, the target date for delivering a reactor to the launch pad, mm -hmm. that's in early 2023. The thing is, that's not the only plan for nuclear. Oh, really? Yeah, it's not the only plan for nuclear because the reactor plan is one of the number of nu new nuclear plans for space, including a nuclear-powered spacecraft. Yeah. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, it's interesting that they're going the nuclear uh, route because the thing is that um, I feel like, yes, it is untapped. It was a little dangerous before. <laughs> Um, but at the same time, I think that it's a good, it's a good way to go, but I do agree with your hydrogen, hydrogen, mm -hmm. if they're able to go through and go to places like, um, the South pole, use the water there and be able to utilize that to travel to a further location like Mars. I think that's pretty good. It's within itself, but I think that this is a good start, especially because I feel the time frame that is going to be coming up is coming up fast. Yeah, I, I do think. There's like a lot of different um, innovations in the um, aerospace or well, space specifically mm -hmm. field, and I think the one you might be I don't know I might be wrong is the they have like ionic thrusters. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. So they're they're super efficient, but I think they might benefit from from that. It's like they yeah basically they shoot like ions out the back of this plane or the spaceship, and then it travels forward. It's only good in terms of like um when you're in space mm -hmm. because like the thrust is not very um powerful compared to like rocket boosters but like it, once you're in space there's no friction so you can like you just you just need a little bit of thrust yeah. to move mm -hmm. yeah to a certain amount oh that's so interesting to to hear about yeah but i think that yeah it's going to be interesting to see the new um the new spaceships that are going to be coming out with uh what is it with the these nuclear power or even if they later do like hydrogen power one um, yeah i think what might also be happening is that they're going to be setting up these these bases on the moon mm -hmm. to create the spacecraft on the moon oh yeah because like you could do like so the thing i think about is um like spacex's um um their big rocket yeah, the one that like is Refuels. supposed to well, no, it's supposed to be like a um a transportation vehicle. It's supposed to transport stuff to space. Yeah, and I think it's a Falcon, or yeah. the, there's all anyways. There's, there's the big one, the one that's like the star. No, Starship. Anyways, so the Starship is supposed to go up and then like bring stuff up. So I think like they could bring up like the the reactors from Earth and stuff, but then like make different because like rockets and stuff ha on earth have to like deal with aerodynamics but if you if you can oh, make a spaceship it can be whatever shape you want yeah and if they do it on the moon they could uh, they probably have like more leeway for the yeah. what is it to assemble to move to do mm -hmm. a lot of other a lot of other things to it so yeah. yes it does yeah it does lead me to think as well to a manufacturing plant with the or just the what is it being able to transfer all, transport all these parts over there mm -hmm. to the moon, um, but yeah, I think eventually there's most likely going to be a colony on the moon. I wonder. So the last thing is, I wonder what type of. I wonder if there are going to be people on the moon or if it's going to be robots. Oh, my that's a, God. but that's where a different story because, <laughs> that, like, my brain, I'm like, oh, you know, it'd be probably easier just to have a robot just be there and then yeah because doing stuff yeah because at the same time it's like i think this this is yeah this is the very very last <laughs> bit of this they were already doing those tests of how people are uh how people were living in like 
isolated pods or like mm. not really isolated oh, pods. Oh yeah, yeah, the Mars simulation. It, yes, the Mars simulation. That's why I also was thinking it's like, oh, this is eventually going to happen. It's either going to happen on the moon or it's going to happen on Mars. But it's definitely going to happen. But yes, I would want to know from our audience what they think about this. And do you think that nuclear is the way to go? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you.